Yanni, welcome to Sidewalks. It's great to have you with us today. Hi, Cindy. It's my pleasure. So, where were you born and raised? I was born in Kalamata, Greece, southern southern tip of the peninsula. It's just beautiful there. I, I can only imagine. I've never been to Greece. What was your life like in Greece, and, and why did you leave? Uh, actually, the, the life that, that, I, that I lived when I was a kid, it was just absolutely gorgeous, easy, sheltered, everything perfect. A lot of, a lot of my friends who come and visit uh, my hometown in southern Greece, they go, why did you ever leave? <laughs> I, I can imagine. The answer is because I was crazy. <laughs> actually, because I had a lot of desires. I, I wanted to, to do something, to make a difference. Uh, and I think there was a fire inside me that was burning that pushed me to move on. How were you first introduced to music, and when did you decide that music was actually going to be a viable career option? <laughs> um, that was much later in life. I, I was introduced to music when I was very young, and uh, I, I remember my mom and dad, uh, my dad would play the guitar, and my mom would sing, and usually it was family gatherings after dinner, and the older folks had a few more glasses of wine than they there could have, and everybody was singing and so on. And so we, we, we were raised with that. But I didn't really decide to get into the music business or make it into a career until after I graduated from college. Mm -hmm. Now, did your family encourage your ambition in the music business, or did they sort of take the practical stance and say, are you crazy? <laughs> um, they came close to saying, are you crazy, but they refrained. They, uh, my parents, uh, the way I was raised, they essentially supported the kids. There's three of us. Um, they actually, when I announced that I was not going to go in, on to graduate studies, studies in psychology, um, they just asked me if I needed any help. They would be there for me. Um, I know they had plans to discuss this with me five, ten years later. I still hadn't succeeded. And they, I'm sure they were very worried about me. But none sure. of the members of the family ever came out and said, you know, why don't you stop this? Well, that's definitely uh, nice to hear because a lot of parents would be concerned. I know, you know, my parents would say, you know, I want you to follow your dreams, but at the same time, I don't want you to set yourself up. So yeah. um, that's great. So what was really the turning point for you in, in, with your music? What was your big break? Was there, was there a moment in time? I think the, my career has been going upwards slowly, step by step. Mm -hmm. there, there have been peaks. Uh, I think the most major peak was with the Acropolis video because I got a chance for the first time to present my music to a, a wide audience all over the world. Mm -hmm. But I think the very beginning was my appearance on the Oprah Winfrey show with Linda. Um, and that sort of uh, gave me an access to a, a fairly large audience. Right, right. And gosh, mm -hmm. everything that Oprah Winfrey touches turns to gold. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you're no exception. Now, you have played some amazing venues over the course of your career, such mm -hmm. as the Forbidden City in China, mm -hmm. the Taj Mahal in India. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite, and if so, uh, why? Really, you know, not because of the music or because of the venue, but because I was born and raised in Greece, and as a little kid, uh, I had fantasies of maybe someday performing at the Herod Atticus Theater in Greece. Mm -hmm. Plus the fact it was the first time I was performing in Greece. That has to be uh, my wow. favorite concert. Because you have your mother and father and all your friends and relatives and everybody. It was like, okay, I left this country. Here's what I've been doing for the last 20 years. I hope you enjoy it. And they seem to enjoy it. Wow. I can't believe that was the first time. That's amazing. Yes. Good for you. I can imagine that was a great memory. You know, it, it doesn't really seem to matter where you play. Your music really transcends all different languages, cultural differences. Your popularity really speaks for itself. How do you explain that? Different cultures can appreciate you the exact same way. That is very difficult to explain. I have theories about it, but it's very difficult to explain. But I'm thrilled um, that this is happening. And, and uh, it's really amazing to, to look at my concerts and see all kinds of races and all kinds of age groups. Right. And see six-year-olds six year and 70-year-olds. Um, that's not something that an artist can honestly say that they set forth to accomplish that. What I try to do is be honest with what I create. Just tell the truth the way life feels like to me. And don't pander to an audience and don't really pay attention to what's selling and what's in. Just tell the truth about you. And that actually leads me to talking about your album, If I Could Tell You. Why don't you tell me, uh, tell me about it? Um, 
if I could tell you, I would tell you everything that's in the music <laughs> in this album. Um, it is a, it's slightly different. It's a departure from the previous couple of albums. The Acropolis and the Tribute albums were obviously concerts that were converted into albums. And as such, they tend to be dramatic or fairly dramatic. Mm. Uh, this particular album, if I could tell you, is a little more consistent in mood. I hope it has a very strong mood because I intentionally wanted to do that. Right. Uh, but I also made it a little more even keeled and a little less energetic. Um, I felt like it at the time, and so I hope people enjoy it. What was the inspiration for this album? The same that it's been for all my music. It's life. You're living. You just live. Uh, and as life moves you, there is a reason to express yourself. You, you need to talk about what life feels like to you. How long did it take to pull all of this together? Because as I was reading through all of your, your biography material, it, it indicated that you write, you produce the whole thing yourself. It's mm. like you're like a one-man operation. Mm. It must have taken a long time. Actually, I, I go through tremendous focus. It's very intense when I work. I don't really leave the studio. I don't leave this place. <laughs> I just sit here for months at a time. Um, so it took me... I think the, the, the recording aspect of it, uh, eight months, ten months. Wow. Um, but it's 16-hour days, very few days off in between. Don't watch television, don't listen to the radio, don't pick up the phone. Right. And my friends and relatives are pretty much used to me doing that by now. Hmm. Well, listen, we were so excited to have you on our show that we, we promoted you on our website and asked our viewers for some questions. So I wondered if you would mind responding to some viewer mail. I think that would be great. Oh, that'd be great. Rochelle from Richmond, California asks, what or who inspired you to pursue your dream in the music field? I think it, was, it came from inside. Um, the influence might have been because I was raised with parents who, who were music lovers. Um, are we still on? Yes. Okay. I, um, I, I think that might have started there, but I think it also takes... Uh, a, a tremendous faith in yourself to take a chance like that. Mm -hmm. uh, to just be ready to, you know, I wanted to become a shrink. I wanted to get a PhD in clinical psychology and then it would have been a much more secure life, supposedly. Nobody sure. knows. Uh, but just to have the guts to just go, you know what? What I want to do really is do music. And I know it's very dangerous and there's no security in it and there's no, nothing to fall back onto and so on. But this is what I want to do in my life and have the nerve to do it. Yanni, thank you so much for joining us on Sidewalks today. As we close, do you have any career advice? Career advice is the same that I would give to anyone. It's like have faith in yourself. And if you love something, you have a passion for it, go for it. That's the only thing you need, really. Thank you so much for being with us today, and, and uh, I love your album. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.